Hello and thank you for joining us on the news on NTA International. Coming to you live from Abuja, I am Ruth Aguele. Let's begin with the headlines. Nigeria pledges continuous support to restore peace, security and political stability in troubled Libya. Presidential election petitions court continues hearing on petition of People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar. And former Congolese rebel leader Bosco Intanganda becomes first person to get International Criminal Court's conviction of sexual slavery. And the news in detail, Nigeria has pledged continued support to the troubled North African nation of Libya in its quest towards regaining and sustaining peace, security and political stability. President Muhammadu Buhari made a pledge while granting audience to the head of Libya's government of national accord, Fayez al-Saraj, on the margins of the AU summit in Niamey, Niger Republic. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has details. It was the first formal interaction between President Muhammad Buhari and the head of Libya's government of national accord. Their discussions centered on issues of common interest between Nigeria and Libya, especially recent developments in the North African country. Presently, there are over 6,000 Nigerians stranded in Libya after unsuccessful attempts to make it to Europe. President Buhari attributed the humanitarian crisis to terrorism and insurgency as well as the drying up of Lake Chad, which affected the livelihoods of over 30 million people depending on the lake for farming, fishing and animal husbandry. Nigeria, he said, will do its very best in supporting efforts at stabilizing Libya. The head of Libya's government of national accord had told the president that there were a lot of deaths and injuries in his country, but his government is determined to put an end to the situation. al Suraj declared that Libya contributed a lot to the establishment and survival of the African Union, and therefore it is now time for Africa to reciprocate. At a separate audience with the United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Muhammad, President Buhari stressed the role the international community needs to play in recharging the lake as the financial cost is beyond the scope of the affected countries. The president decried the menace of terrorism in the Sahel countries, noting that the instability in Libya has been a negative force on the Sahel. On her part, the Deputy Secretary General told the president that the growing security challenges in Africa are adversely affecting growth and undermining the attainment of sustainable development goals. The Deputy Secretary General congratulated President Buhari for signing the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement at the AU summit saying the entire world was waiting for Nigeria. Issues relating to the drying up of Lake Chad also dominated discussions when President Buhari played host to the President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akinwumi Adeshino. We have to make sure that we reduce the shocks that people are having and that we have more resilient communities in those areas and, and you know I am fully fully committed to that because you cannot uh, integrate uh, fragile societies uh, you can only integrate resilient societies and their communities. President Buhari also engaged the vice president of the Islamic Development Bank Nigeria's Mansur Mukhtar during which he commended the bank for ongoing interventions in agriculture, trade and investment, rural development and food security in Nigeria, saying the country will appreciate more support in other critical sectors. From Niamey, Republic of Niger, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And the 12th extraordinary session of the African Union in Niamey, Niger Republic, has come and gone. But its memories will continue to linger in the minds of participants for a very long time. One of such remarkable moments in history was the signing of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement by President Muhammad Buhari, thereby giving hope and impetus to the realization of One Africa. Once again, let's join correspondent Adam Sambo for details. Apart from unveiling the commemorative plaque 
Five operational instruments of the African continental free trade area were also launched to formally bring to an end the Niamey Summit of the African Union. Amongst the instruments were the Rules of Origin, African Trade Observatory Dashboard, and the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System aimed at supporting the creation of the desired active and efficient market. However, the most striking feature of the summit was the signing of the AFCFTA agreement by Nigerian leader, President Muhammad Buhari. He told his counterparts at a closed session that the instrument of ratification will not only be deposited expeditiously, but the strong leadership required in the implementation of the agreement will also be provided by Nigeria. Some of the participants at the summit spoken to were unanimous that Nigeria had taken the right step at the right time. Uh, for me, I couldn't be prouder uh, as a Nigerian, so I just came to tell Mr. President that I'm so delighted with that. Last year, Mr. President, President Buhari delayed the signing at Kigali so that he can, in deference to his democratic ideals, consult with the organized private sector, consult with manufacturers, processors, and uh, all those who will be affected by the agreement. So we have gotten wiser, and the consultations, no doubt, have provided clues and avenues of what we are going to do in order to ensure that there will be responsible trading so that Nigeria can benefit as well as other countries in Africa. And it is a sincere belief that prices of commodities may come down and access to some of the commodities that we are lacking in the region, in Nigeria in particular, could be obtained and some of the bureaucratic bottlenecks with respect to customs and others will also be reduced. But it is my sincere belief that the Borneo will have some of the free trade zone in our own place and then this will now uh, improve the means of livelihood of the displaced communities in Borneo State. Uh, the trade volume within the state will also increase. The market is there, the opportunities are here and uh, with the level of uh, entrepreneurship in Nigeria I believe we will take advantage of that. Already we are developing an economic zone uh, consisting of over 800 hectares and uh, this year we are going to start on 100 hectares uh, along the GBA border going into coming into Niger and other West African countries. Uh, for us we will take advantage of whatever that to make sure that Nigeria, Nigeria and Katana in particular is taking its uh, share of uh, the fallout of the agreement. Expectations are that if genuinely implemented, the AFCFTA will not only unleash innovation, drive growth and transform African economies, but also contribute to a prosperous, stable and peaceful continent, otherwise referred to as the Africa we want. From Niamey, the Republic of Niger, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mustafa Suleiman, is asking all Nigerian nations abroad, particularly those in Africa, to step up their de economic diplomacy pursuit to enable Nigeria to derive maximum benefits from the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. He was speaking on the outcome of the just concluded African Union Summit in Niamey, Nigeria Republic. Correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. Nigeria's missions abroad present the platform through which the country engages the rest of the world at bilateral and multilateral levels. The goal is to project and protect its national interests. Now that President Muhammad Buhari has finally put pen to paper endorsing the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, Nigerian missions in Africa and the rest of the world have a duty to ensure that the nation's economic diplomacy is accelerated. Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mustafa Suleiman, wants them to be more proactive. I think the President's concern are well articulated in, 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 in our submission to the African Continental Free Trade Area. Don't forget that there are still negotiations going on. You know, this thing is supposed to come on stream by July 2020, which means that there is still time to negotiate and see all the checks and balances that are restored in the, in the Continental Free Trade Area. 
On Nigeria's relations with Nigeria Republic, the Permanent Secretary says it is cordial and excellent, asking all Nigerians living in the country to be law-abiding and avoid tarnishing Nigeria's image. Um, our message all the time is for Nigerians wherever they are to continue to be good representatives of Nigeria. Those of them who are resident here, they don't give us any trouble. However, there are also a few who do not understand the need for documentation. In Niamey, Nigeria Republic, Makut Simon Macham, NT News. And still on the foreign scene, let's now join Obiageli Ugwoke for stories trending on, the, on that scene. Hello and thanks for joining us. The African Union has condemned the last week attack on migrant detention center in Tripoli, Libya. The AU Peace and Security Council at its 857th meeting in Niamey, Niger Republic, reviewed the security situation and the plight of African migrants in Libya. The continental body calls for an independent inquiry with the participation of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights with a view to establishing the facts of the 3rd July attack. It also says that the United Nations Security Council has the primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security in Libya in accordance with the UN Charter. In the meantime, the Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament, Mustafa Siselo, has promised to converse for investors for Cape Verde, especially in the tourism. He says this is imperative given the comparative advantage of the West African country with beautiful beaches and breathtaking landscapes. The Speaker stated this when he led members of Parliament to visit the mayor of SAO Domingos. Clemente Gracia Kevert, the mayor of SOO Domingos, solicits the assistance and support of ECOWAS in the area of infrastructural development. And the former rebel leader has been found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity in the Democratic Republic of Congo by judges at the International Criminal Court, ICC. Bosco Ntangada was convicted of 18 counts, including murder, rape, and using child soldiers. He becomes the fourth person convicted by the ICC since its creation in 2002. And that's the package. Many thanks for your time. I'm Obiageli Ugoke. Thank you, Obiageli. Now, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has vowed to redouble efforts to achieve the next level agenda of the federal government. This is coming on, it, on the heels of his assumption of office following his reappointment by President Muhammad Buhari. Mitari Iqman reports. For a man who believes God has a hand in human affairs, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, arrives his office to resume following his reappointment. But he walks into this surprise. Boss Mustafa describes his reappointment by the president as humbling and a call to national service. I express, I mean, uh, my gratitude to God first and to the president for reposing this level of confidence in me. What that does is that I am not about to take this confidence lightly. It's an honorous task that has been placed on my, so on my shoulders. And uh, going forward, uh, reflecting on the things that the country is going through, all that calls to question is a, red a rededication. As the SGF settles down to his onerous tasks, the governor of Gombe State came calling as his first visitor. We stand for the ideals of the FEC, so you should expect that uh, we'll deliver good governance, we shall fight corruption, and we shall instill discipline on the system. The SGF appeals for greater commitment from all agencies of government to drive the next level policies and programs to logical conclusion. In Abuja Mitaire, Ikben, NTNU. 
The National Youth Service Corps has described as false a statement from a group on the auspices of the Coalition for Peace and Justice, saying the Director General of the NYSC, Brigade General Shoaibu Ibrahim, is out to Islamize the orientation camp in Benue State because of the absence of a mosque. A statement by the Director, Press and Public Relations Unit, Adenike Adeyemi, says the claim does not reflect the Director General's instruction when he visited the orientation camp. It adds that the DG's instruction was targeted at the welfare of core members and aimed at ensuring members of all approved religious bodies worship on the structures built for that purpose so that they are not exposed to negative weather elements in an event of rain and extreme sunshine. The NYSC DG stated this while on a tour of the orientation camp at Wanune Taka, local government area of Benue State, where he observed that religious bodies representing the two major religions were worshipping in open spaces and therefore directed the state coordinator to pay advocacy visits to patrons of the groups to erect places of worship for the core members. This is the news on NT International. Stay tuned for more reports after this break. International News, Africa as it is. Thank you for staying tuned. And now to legislative matters. The minority caucus of the House of Representatives has appealed to the People's Democratic Party to resign its decision of suspending the House Minority Leader Indudu Elumelu and six others. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the minority caucus of the House of Representatives made the plea while briefing newsmen. The minority caucus, in reacting to recent happenings on the issue of minority leadership at the House of Representatives, the recent of which is the suspension of seven members of the House, including the minority leader by the PDP, insisted that the choice of Ndudi Ilumelu as minority leader was a collective resolve of all minority parties that have representation in the House and in line with standing rules. The parliament since 1999 till date has remained an independent body that has not been coerced into accepting any leadership imposed on it by external influence, not in line with the wishes of majority of its members. While suing for peaceful resolve of the issue by the National Working Committee of the PDP, the caucus called on well-meaning party leaders with legislative experience to intervene. Our decision to constitute the minority leadership of the Ninth House of Representatives is in consonance with the House Standing Orders, particularly Order 7, Rule 8, which derives its strength from Section 60 of our Constitution. The National Working Committee last Friday suspended for one month seven PDP members of the House of Representatives for alleged indiscipline, insubordination and disobedience based on its investigations concerning emergence of the new minority leadership of the House of Representatives. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Let's move to judiciary. The presidential election petition court has continued its hearing of the petition of People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar. The PDP and its candidates are challenging the victory of President Muhammad Buhari at the February 23rd presidential election. So far, the petitioners have tendered documents concerning 10 states, counsel to the Independent National Electoral Commission, Ustaz Osman, SAN, 
President Muhammad Buhari, Wale Olanikwekun, SAN, and APC, Latif Fabemi, SAN, objected to the admissibility of the documents tendered. Counsel to the respondents reserved reasons for their objections for their written final addresses. Candidate through their counsel, Libby Uzoku, SAN, tendered form EC8C, EC8B, and EC8A for four local government areas of Kano State. The petitioners also tendered documents relating to the conduct of the presidential elections in Sanfara State. Form CF001, containing the name of the second respondent, was equally tendered and admitted in evidence. In addition, certified true copies of 10 press releases issued by the Independent National Electoral Commission and other newspaper cuttings were submitted in evidence. The petitioners also availed the court form EC8E containing the final results of the presidential election conducted on February 23, 2019, which was marked SCB 3 having been admitted in evidence by the court. Of all the documents tendered, only from EC8E and press cuttings were not strongly opposed by the council to INEC, Usman Ustas, SAN, Wali Olani Pekun, SAN, council to President Buhari, and Latif Pagbemi, SAN, council to the APC. Council to the respondent objected to the admissibility of all the documents. Petitioners at the Monday sitting also called six witnesses. They are Buba Galadima, Peter Obi, Adejui Ton Olalekon, Adedo Pwadiwi, Mohamed Tafa, and Mustafa Belo. All the witnesses adopted their statements under oath. During cross examination, counsel to President Mahmoud Buhari, Waleola Nipekun SAN, put it to Buba Galadima that he supported President Buhari in 2003, 2007, 2011, and 2015, believing in his competence. It was equally put across to Buba Galadima that he fell out with President Buhari due to the inability of the second respondent to appoint him as a minister, a claim Buba Galadima described as untrue. Counsel to the respondents made frantic efforts in impeaching the evidence of the other witnesses during cross-examination. After calling six witnesses out of the petitioners proposed four hundred witnesses, the court adjourned to Tuesday night, July 2019 for continuation. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. And still on the judiciary, magistrates in the country are to undergo a continuous evaluation of their conduct and performance to sustain the ethical standards that the judiciary is known for. The acting Chief, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, emphasized this during an orientation program for newly appointed magistrates in the country. Olabadi Arewa has more. Gathered in this all our magistrates, recently appointed to take charge of magistrate courts across the country. This training program exposes them to current practices in justice delivery. I expect to be a better magistrate by the time I'm done with the training. With what the ACTCJN has discussed with us, we should, it should show corruption. Drawing from his wealth of experience, the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Justice Tank of Muhammad advised the new magistrates to avoid pitfalls which could be obstacles to the ability to deliver substantial justice. To perform your judicial duties skillfully and expeditiously without bias or prejudice and must always remember that justice delayed is justice denied. Your courts are essentially the top roots of the modern day judiciary. All these are geared towards inculcating the highest ethical standards as well as upholding judicial excellence at the magistrate courts. The three days training program with the theme promoting excellence in the magistrate courts focuses on issues such as granting of bail pre-trial detention, and writing of judgments. In Abuja, on Labo Darewa, NTA News. Time now to bring you up to speed with some major developments in the business world with Olayin Kawujo. Welcome to Business News. 
The Secretary General of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Mohamed Sanusi Bakindo, has condemned in strong terms U.S.-led sanctions against Venezuela and Iran. These sanctions, in addition to mass mobilization against their operations, Bakindo says, are the greatest threat to the global oil and gas industry. We would welcome a resolution of the issues uh, that are at stake between these countries and the United States. Uh, sanctions distort markets and it further complicates uh, our global effort. The Nigerian stock exchange has expelled 38 stockbroking firms from the capital market. The firms were expelled in two badges within the past six months. This was contained in a circular signed by Shobanjo, head of Broker Dealers Regulation Department at the NSC. The latest expulsion brings the number of stockbroking firms expelled over the past two and a half years to more than 120. Let's now see how the equities market fared this Monday. I am Olainka Ojo. I'm sure you're aware that Monday's weather was thundery and rainy in many parts of the country here in Nigeria. But here's a graphic illustration of how Tuesday's weather will look like. And that wraps up the news on NT International at this time. Thank you for watching. I am Ruth Aguele.